please don't wait until your blocked account is almost finished so that you can start looking for a job because sometimes they might be a little bit tricky to come by. If you have clicked on this video, then you're probably curious to know more about working in Germany while still being a student either pursuing a bachelor's or a master's program. In today's episode, I'm going to try to answer as many frequently asked questions about working in Germany as a student as I can possibly find. In case I do not manage to answer any question that you may have, please leave it in the comment section below and I will respond to it. Thank you so much for the support so far. As you can see, we have recently crossed the 200 subscriber mark and the big goal of 2024 is to get to a thousand subs by the end of the year. So again, I kindly ask you, yes, you who hasn't yet subscribed to help us get there. Lastly, I advise you to kindly watch the video to the end as somewhere in between I will talk about the different types of jobs available for students, what they generally pay per month, and how to get them. Let's get started. Simple answer here, yes you are. In fact, it is advisable for you to start working as soon as possible. Please don't wait until your blocked account is almost finished so that you can start looking for a job because sometimes they might be a little bit tricky to come by. The German law dictates that you can either work for 120 full days or for 240 half days, which is about 960 total work hours in a year which roughly breaks down to 20 hours per week. What's up everybody? Hopefully you're enjoying the video so far. However, there is a small update to what I have just said regarding the number of days that international students are allowed to work for. This change came into effect after I had already recorded the video, so I felt it's important to give up-to-date information and that's why I am putting this clip in between the video. So I'll read it off this particular website that I found and I'll leave a screenshot so that you guys can also read along. And it basically says that non-EU or EEA students, so basically non-European students from around the world, so Africa, Asia, America, under the new law as of March 1st, 2024, international students have increased annual working limit to 140 full days or 280 half days. So remember before it was 120 and 240, now it is 140 and 280. So basically they've added 20 full days or 40 more half days. So that means you can work more and earn more, which I guess everyone benefits. Anyway, back to the video. Again, another simple answer, yes. All persons who wish to seek gainful employment in Germany are required to obtain a residence permit in the form of a visa. Where needed, a work permit will be included in the visa issued for this purpose. When you get your residence permit, you will be given a supplementary sheet which is usually green in color and that document will dictate whether you are allowed to work and for how many days in a year. Yes, during semester breaks, you can work up to 40 hours a week. No, you don't technically need to. In fact, if you're going to a big city such as Berlin or Munich, you can find many jobs that do not require German proficiency, but just be aware that being fluent in German opens way more doors when it comes to employment as the higher paying jobs usually require you to be fluent in both German and English. Mm -hmm. 
This is a little difficult to explain, but I will try my level best. I would categorize student jobs in three different ways. The first are labor intensive jobs. These include, for example, working at a warehouse or a hub or doing delivery or cleaning jobs. Basically, these are very physical jobs where you mostly need to use your hands and feet and have a lot of energy. Cost related jobs, on the other hand, are those forms of employment related to the course that you're studying. So, for example, if you're studying civil engineering, you apply for a student position at a design consultancy and work there part time. And the last category of student jobs are kind of difficult to classify because they are not really labor intensive and are not necessarily related to the study program, but it is dependent on a particular skill that you may possess. So I'll just refer to them as skill based jobs. So, for example, back in 2022, I met an international student who was working at a reception of a major hotel chain and he used to deal with guests. The guy used to earn about 17 euro per hour just because he was an extrovert who loved talking to people and he had the skill of speaking fluent German. So if you have a particular skill such as, I don't know, braiding hair or coding or even something random such as plumbing or carpentry, you can really make good money here in Germany. Unlike in my home country where you need to know someone or have a godfather or a godmother in order to get a job, in Germany, you simply go online, search for jobs in a specific role, and then add your city, and a list of jobs will appear. Next, you just need to check whether you meet the minimum requirements for the role, apply, and wait for feedback. If you get a call back, you attend the interviews, do the best you can, and there's a high probability that the job will be yours. If the people conducting the interviews obviously like your application. Sometimes jobs will also be advertised on your program's department website or notice board, so be checking those regularly. Well, that's dependent on a few factors such as the type of job you're able to land, the hourly rate that the job pays, and how many hours you are able to work. So for example, as of February 2024, the minimum wage in Germany for any formal employment is 12 euro 41 cents per hour. If as a student you work for the 20 hours per week, at the end of the month you will earn about 992 euro and 80 cents per month. If you're interested to find out how much a student living in Germany spends in one month, check out this video, link in the top right corner or in the description down below. Taxation in Germany is mandatory for anyone working as long as you earn more than the minimum amount exempt from tax, which I think is about 538 euro per month. So taking amount from the previous calculation, which was about 900 euro per month, this money is subject to taxes such as pension insurance, employment tax, health insurance, unemployment insurance, and many more. After the taxes, you'll probably be left with about 805 euro per month. So just keep in mind, the more you earn, the more you will be taxed. Yes, you do. Health insurance is mandatory for anyone in Germany, whether you are a minor, an adult, or you're retired. I don't think there are restrictions against working in certain industries and if there are please let me know in the comment section down below. What I am aware of is that international students are not allowed to be self-employed 
or work as freelancers. The documents usually required for a job application usually include a valid passport for identification, a valid residence permit or a visa, the supplementary sheet that usually comes either with your resident permit or with your visa, a certificate of enrollment from the current semester from your university, a copy of your health insurance card, a bank account at a German bank, one or two passport photos, and finally a completely filled application form which is usually given by your employer. This is another tough question to try to answer because it really depends on the individual as some people handle stress better than others. Just remember, the more you work, the more your studies will be affected. So to try find a balance, maybe you could work on days that maybe you don't have lectures, for example, on Saturdays. Also, try not to work more than 20 hours a week. Next, try to apply for less labor-intensive jobs. So for example, I personally try to avoid Amazon warehouse jobs as they are notorious for being physically challenging. Lastly, apply for jobs with more flexible work schedules. I would personally avoid working at places that force you to have a shift in the middle of a weekday when you're meant to be having classes. And there you have it. If you found this video helpful, please do not forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more insightful content. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in future videos, please let me know in the comments section. But until next time, bye!